Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, we will continue our lecture series with Kernel Filter. Uh, in last couple of lectures, we have uh, given some overview and some uh, some implementation formulas and things like that, uh, how to use Kernel Filter design. And also I told last lecture that uh, we will actually derive some of these relationships uh, to have better understanding on that, that way. So, this is where we will start our derivation process and the first thing is uh, we will derive everything in the linear domain. Uh, and continuous time domain actually. Okay. So, okay, let us understand the, the theory behind that. So, so, first thing what you are interested in this particular lecture is Kalman filter design for linear time invariant systems in continuous time domain. Basically. So, this uh, going back uh, I mean uh, the problem statement it turns out to be something very precisely like this. You have got a system dynamics uh, which is uh, x dot is a x plus v u plus z w and whereas measured output see something like c x plus v where w and v are noise things and w is a process noise vector and v is sensor noise uh, or I mean sensor noise vector basically. So, there are a bunch of assumptions which, uh, which will make us to make our life much easier later and the assumptions turns out to be something like like this. See, so, okay. Now, when you any time you have a linear system dynamics, okay, and remember this, uh, these are like a time invariant system. That means A, B, C, G, all that are constant matrices actually. Okay. And then, any time you have a dynamic equation, we also have initial condition associated with that. Okay. So, the initial condition that is x of zero is assumed to be this way. This is x tilde zero, comma p zero. That this notation tells us the first element is the expected value mu or mean value and this is nothing but the covariance matrix actually. Okay. So, x of 0 has a non-zero mu obviously because that is where you expect things to be happening in the beginning and it also has something like a noise covariance uh, with this uh, error covariance matrix P naught actually. What about W and V? W is the W and V are expected to be I mean they are characterized as 0 mean. So, both of them has 0 mean. W has uh, Q is something like uh, process noise covariance. So, that is how it is Q is defined and V uh, the covariance is, is R actually. Okay. What do you mean by that? Obviously, you mean something like this. Okay. That means, the expected value of W W transpose if you take that way. This turns out to be a uh, Q times the direct rate law function and similarly, expected value of V V transpose if you take that turns out to be a direct delta function multiplied by r actually. Okay. But there is a very important behavior here, okay. The, the two assumptions actually, which tells us that uh, x of 0, w t and v t are actually mutually orthogonal. That I take any combination x of 0 and w or w to v or v to x 0, I take any combination they are mutually orthogonal, okay. And second thing is this w and v are non correlated, uncorrelated and they are white noise. So, you see the assumptions actually, many assumptions involved, but uh, beauty is it the filtering still works actually. Okay. Understand to summarize again, you have got three things which is randomly varying initial condition W and V, they are characterized by something like their mean value and covariance matrix everywhere. All these three signals are assumed to be mutually orthogonal and W of T, V of T are actually uncorrelated white noise. Okay. This is, uh, I mean, uh, these two are very important assumptions which you will use in the derivation process actually. Now, let us see how do you propose something like a filter dynamics and how do you kind of compute the gain associated with that? That is the more uh, thing actually. That is the objective. That means, uh, our uh, problem statement uh, in objective sense is something like this. Our main objective is to obtain an estimate of the state vector x, x hat of t using the system dynamics as well as sequence of measurements as accurate as possible. Okay. 
So, we do not uh, really know x actually, remember we, we typically know y. So, we want to get x, obviously you cannot get x uh, as it is. So, we get some approximate value of x, that is what you are talking about as estimation process. And the question is uh, can you make sure that the error between x at and, and the true x goes to 0 basically, that then you will get x at which is which closely resembles x. Basically. So, this is the process that we are interested in getting some x height of t okay. and in the process we will use system dynamics uh, as well as sequence measurements and then we will get some estimate x height of t okay. in the sense that the error between x and x height if I define x tilde like that then it goes to 0 as t goes to infinity. Okay. Initially they will have some error, but as time evolves this error will, will not be there basically. This means x height will closely mimic or closely resemble x actually. Okay. What is helping us in doing that? Two things, uh, one is uh, the system dynamics and the other one is the okay, system dynamics, the other one is measured output. Okay. All right, so, let us see how it is possible. Okay. First thing is we, I mean we propose an observer dynamics or sometimes a estimator dynamics or filter dynamics people call it in different names and all that that way. So, this is uh, def defined very close to what we already have here x set dot is a x set plus b u plus k e times innovation y minus y hat and y is the actual measured output and y hat okay, what is y hat. Now, y hat is expected value of y basically. Okay and expect and y is nothing but c x plus v. Okay. So, you can substitute that c x plus v, but again expected value is a, is a linear operator. So, we can do this linear operation here expected value of c x plus expected value of v, but expected value of v is 0 because that is 0 mean white noise, mean is 0. If it is gone, then it is again expected value is a linear operator. So, it turns out to be c times c x and e of x is uh, is x height actually. Okay. So, k e okay, what is what is happening here is nothing but the, the gain actually. So, estimator, filter or, or Kalman gain. Now, the whole point is how to design this k e. Okay. Once we know this k e, we have got this uh, this initial condition at least the mean value sense and we can simply propagate this dynamics that is the whole idea here. What you have to design a k e in such a way that this happens that means, error goes to 0 as t goes to infinity that is the primary objective actually. How to design that? So, we define the error x tilde is uh, x minus x set and the error then we talk about something like an error dynamics how the error propagates with time. Okay. So, x tilde dot is nothing but x dot minus x set dot simply from this definition and then x dot okay, is nothing but this fellow x plus b u plus z w. Whereas, x, x hat dot is nothing but the observer dynamics and observer dynamics is that you put that. Then we combine terms. So, a x minus a x hat. So, that comes here g w comes here b u well this uh, b u b u gets cancelled out. Okay. Okay. Then you get uh, okay, minus k e times uh, so sorry g w g w here then minus k e times y is nothing but c x plus v minus y hat, y hat is nothing but c x hat, we just derived that actually. Okay, so, this c x hat. So, this term is nothing but x tilde. So, this is a times x tilde here and then minus k e times uh, uh, I mean this uh, well let us see this term, this is g w minus k e v here. Okay. Then you have got these two terms, you can combine x minus x set, x minus x set is x tilde. So, this is k e times c times x minus x tilde that is x, x minus x set that is x tilde basically. So, you have got a x tilde coming from here, g w minus k e v goes there and whatever remains k e times c into x minus x set which is x tilde comes here. Okay. All right, so then we can combine these two guys, okay? And because x tilde is here, x tilde is here. So you take common out of that, that becomes x tilde here, and left out with that term actually. 
ok. And this particular thing I can define it as something like a, a 0, okay. then it turns out to be x tilde dot is nothing but a 0 x tilde plus this quantity 0 w minus k e v. So, what happens here? The uh, interesting observation here is the error dynamics is now driven by both process noise and sensor noise. Okay. The dynamics, I mean the true dynamics is actually driven by process noise, but the moment you put a filter in the loop something like this and then talk about error, then the error dynamics is nothing but okay a function of both w and v that means, it is a function of both process noise as well as sensor noise. Now, some useful observation here that is if you talk about expected value of x tilde dot then what happens we take this expression and then put expected value and then expected value is a linear operator. So, we can do all that and it turns out that it uh, this g is a constant matrix, k is a constant matrix and all that. So, if you see g is a constant matrix, k is a constant matrix, it will it will come out expected value is a linear operator again and then this one and that one turns out to be 0, ok. This two expected value of us w and v 0, they are 0 mean actually. So, 0 mean means expected value of them are, are 0. So, this turns out that uh, the dynamics expected in the expected sense, expected value sense ok d by d t of expected value of x tilde is nothing but a naught times expected is the I mean sorry expected value of x tilde ok. That means, E of x tilde ok that means, expected value of x tilde is a deterministic time bearing quantity now okay. a naught remember that is defined as a minus k e c ok. So, that is deterministic and expected value is a mean value. So, that is a deterministic operator actually ok. I mean uh, once you operate expected value the result turns out to be a, a mean value number basically. Okay. So, when you talk about the expected value of the error and then its dynamics ok d by d t of that it is governed something like that. So, what it tells us the expected value of x tilde is, is a deterministic time varying quantity basically ok. Now, it turns out that uh, this a naught which is defined as a minus k e c is stable that means, uh, all eigen values are in the left top plane. Then what happens expected value of x tilde is nothing but if you take a solution of that is nothing but e to the power n or t times x tilde x 0 tilde and that will that will go to 0 basically because this matrix is always or it is it is a stable matrix actually ok. So, if it happens that way ok then it, it is said to be the estimate is said to be unbiased because the expected value ultimately go to 0. What if it does not happen ok that means, expected value of x tilde does not go to 0 then it is said to be biased actually ok. So, it will ultimately result in some sort of a biased estimate which is uh, not really good because the error things should go to 0 basically then you get uh, uh, what is the true value in the other sense. All right. So, now we will co constitute this uh, going back to this we will construct uh, this Kalman filter the slowly and first first thing to see that ok this error dynamics is given something given by something like this ok. Then how do you use it actually ok. So, we ultimately need some of these expressions later we will see that this this expressions are needed actually. So, we will go slowly actually that way till ok first thing is what is the solution of that. Okay. The solution of for, for getting a solution you can think ok this part is nothing but a time varying input ok. It is, is randomly varying, but this is still a number basically. Okay. So, still it goes to to the dynamics and then tries to alter it. So, it is a time varying input ok if you see that way and once you know this is a time varying input the solution turns out to be like that from linear systems theory ok. So, this part is e to the power n naught t times x tilde dot a homogeneous part plus forcing function part which is given something like a convolution integral basically e to the power a naught times t minus tau multiplied by all these actually and uh, d tau all right. So, this is the solution of that uh, considering this as something like a time varying input. So, how do you simplify this obviously, these two can be separated out first it is uh, I mean this g w and k k e v part of it. And then we are interested in this uh, 
R W X tilde basically. Okay, and here we will we'll use this property that these guys are mutually orthogonal. All these signals are actually mutually orthogonal. So when you compute, uh, when you attempt to compute R W X tilde, okay, then I see nothing but expected value of this fellow. And X tilde you just derived, and that's the reason why we wanted to derive that actually. By the way, okay. So we put this X tilde expression. Okay. Right. So we put that because remember, if I if I even if I take this fellow, then using this linear uh, properties of expected value and the, the because these are orthogonal to each other and all that will cancel out. So, so what will remain is only the integral part coming out of here, and then we'll we'll keep uh, uh, I mean only that part actually because when you operate it with uh, with w okay, only w part will remain remember w and v are also mutual orthogonal that part will also go so this will go because of mutual orthogonality this will also go because of mutual orthogonality what will remain is only that part actually so you put it there okay that only that part and then you can tell okay expected value of this and nothing but transpose thing i can take inside now but the the sequence will be reversed and uh, and this part, this i can um, attempt to put it inside because this is a integral 0 to t. So, w of t is not a function of tau really. So, I can say like a constant as with respect to this integral. So, I can keep it inside. So, that is what it uh, is done here w of t is taken inside. Okay. Then expected value is a linear operator integral is also a linear operator. So, these two will come out. So, expected value can be taken inside. And remember, these things are actually ran, not random variable. These are deterministic quantities, so they don't have to be part of expected value. So expected value turns out to be this, but uh, but this by definition is nothing but the, this Q times direct delta function actually, right? And if there is a integral evaluation with a direct delta function, there is an interesting property actually that uh, of uh, any integral evaluated with direct delta function. See, if you have a f of t okay, and uh, evaluated of uh, delta uh, sorry t minus tau sort of thing, okay, uh, sorry how do I do that actually f of t direct delta of t minus tau, well I let me not do that that way. Okay, fine, that is then d, d tau sort of thing if you well, let me not do that. This is just uh, just tau, let us say so, tau, d tau, integral is there actually. Okay. So, what happens here is uh, like uh, okay, this is also tau by the way. Well, in, in general, we can do this one. This is let's talk about. Let's not get confused here. Okay, in general, we can talk something like this: f of x. Okay, then delta of x. This is this direct delta function dx a to b. Let's say okay. this will turn out to be simply f of a or or f of uh, b. Let's say it is half of a. Okay, if uh, x equal to a if x equal to a this is uh, something like half of uh, f b if x equal to b ok well I do not know why it does not work and this will turn out to be simply f of uh, uh, I mean any value okay f of uh, whatever that c sort of thing if uh, x is uh, any value between x equal to c where c belongs to uh, a b strictly a b not included okay. So, in other words if the value turns out to be one of the boundary values okay then uh, the integral value is just half of that half of the value at that particular point uh, half of the function value at that particular point 
But if it is strictly inside the interval, then uh, it is just the function value basically. But what happens here interestingly, if you observe it, okay, what happens here is uh, the integral value that you are talking about is actually, okay, where are we? Here, okay. So, here we will end up with and then it, we notice that when tau equal to t, okay, that kind of thing, then t happens to be a, a boundary value. Okay. So, the, the entire function whatever it is we are having, we can simply evaluate at uh, t, but we have to make sure that there is a half term associated with that. Okay. So, the half q g transpose e to the power a 0 transpose okay, and this is 0 basically. So, evaluated at tau equal to t. Okay. So, when talk about this one, this is e to the power 0 okay, and e to the power 0 is identity. So, that means, we will end up with some value like this. Okay. I hope it is clear because this is one of the uh, understanding that we need to have. So, we derive the solution like this and then tell okay, we are we are interested in this operator or w x tilde. Remember w is independent, I mean the w is mutually orthogonal with respect to x 0 tilde and v t. So, here is x 0 tilde and here is v tau and all that. So, this will ultimately go to 0. So, we are not interested in that. What will not go to 0 is only this part. So, we keep that part only. Then you use the the idea that okay, expected value is a kind of a linear operator, and this part this part is constant with respect to this integral because t happens to be one of the limits. This can go inside, and then subsequently expected value can go inside the integral. Okay, then only this expected value will turn out to be, and that is nothing but a direct delta function times q. And this direct because this direct delta is there as integrand actually, and this integrand goes to zero at tau equal to t, which is actually, a, I mean, it is getting evaluated at uh, uh, tau equal to t sort of thing. So that is some, I mean, this is a limit of the interval, and this is because of that, it the half term will come. Okay. So this, this is what it is, and because it is has to be evaluated at tau equal to t, which is zero, that means e to the power zero is identity. So we'll end up with something like this actually. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is uh, something that uh, just, uh, or if you are still not uh, very comfortable or something, is, I suggest that you see this uh, uh, direct delta function integral evaluation and all that. It's available in uh, any textbooks actually so on mathematics. Okay. So let's talk out of that actually. All right. So, this is what it is actually. Okay. Similarly, now okay, this is one term that we got. What about the other term? Yes, R V x tilde. So, this V x tilde is again the similar procedure. Now, we have to keep the, the V part of it because this two will go to 0. So, once you have V part of it uh, and then there is a transpose there. So, take the transpose inside and then the reverse sequence will happen. And again, expected value and integrand are uh, linear operators. So, the one can go inside. You will have this w w transpose again, which is nothing but q. Again, there is an integral evaluation, and that go integral this goes to 0 at one of the boundary values. So, that half term will come. So, again, this turns out to be this fellow. Okay. And uh, sorry, the, uh, the, then R V of x tilde will will be very similar. So, you remember there is a there is a negative term here. So this negative term will will be there here that part. So again, we uh, we take V T inside, and then this transpose inside with the reverse sequence. So then uh, then whatever is uh, this expected value will go inside the inter integral. Then this part is nothing but R times direct delta. Really. So, because and then again this uh, this is evaluated at one of the limit points. So, half of that and then evaluated tau equal to t which is identity here. So, let it left out with that actually. All right. So, why you are interested in so much of this analysis of these two things and all because we will soon need it in the in the error uh, I mean the covariance matrix propagation and things like that we need that actually. So, what is error covariance matrix? As I told, it is defined as an outer product between the error uh, of this variable x tilde, x tilde and x tilde transpose, respective value of that. Yeah. 
So, what about the aerodynamics uh, or uh, this uh, propagation of this, uh, this covariance matrix, what happens actually? Okay, so, the, then that is P dot and remember derivative and expected value both are op linear operators. So, derivative can go inside the expected operator and you have two variables like this. So, it operates that way and uh, remember these are vector matrix things. So, make sure that the order is maintained and then this, uh, this part I will keep it as it is, but what about this? This is nothing but this same I mean, what if I alter these two, then the whole transpose actually and, and I take expected value inside. So, it turns out that it is nothing but expected value of this plus expected value of the same thing whole transpose actually. Okay. So, if I if I get expected value of this, I do not have to recompute it because the, this is nothing but this same thing with a transpose thing. Now, what about this fellow? Okay. So, expected value of x tilde x tilde transpose, what is that actually? Okay. So, now x tilde dot is nothing but uh, this this one, right? Uh, we derived it before. And so, you just take this one, okay, a lot of uh, simple bookkeeping actually. So, then you multiply, expand the bracket, multiply everywhere, then take expected value, okay. And remember this, uh, this what expected value what you are seeing here is nothing but R w x tilde and this expected value what you see is nothing but R v x. That is why we are interested in deriving that. Then this by definition is simply p. Okay. So, what it turns out to be this this one is nothing but n r p plus this quantity which we derived to be g, g times this quantity and this quantity has been derived like this y naught k e times r v x tilde and r v x tilde I derive something like this. Okay. So, then it uh, if you expand that it turns out to be n r p plus half g q g transpose plus this minus minus becomes half half of k e r k e transpose basically. Then what is p dot? Remember p dot is expected value of this plus same thing whole transpose. So, we got expected value of this. So, then p dot is expected in this one plus the entire thing whole transpose actually. Okay. So, p dot turns out to be like this. So, very close to what we know in LQR theory actually. Okay. All right. Now, we need to find a solution for p. Okay. And the theorem tells us so some standard result is there, which tells us that uh, if k e is designed in such a way that uh, a 0 or a naught, which is defined as a minus k e. So, if this a minus k e is stable, okay, if k e is designed in such a way that a minus k e is stable, then given an initial condition for p, which is uh, p of 0 is p naught, then a positive, def positive semi definite solution can always be obtained. That is what the theorem tells actually. Okay. And there is also another theorem which uh, which tells us that uh, the, uh, the error covariance matrix P t actually approaches a steady state, steady state value P as long as this is asymptotically stable. Actually, it not only there is a positive definite solution, but it actually goes to some sort of a steady state solution actually. So, if you have steady state solution and we want to that particular steady state solution only, then P dot has to be 0 basically. Okay. So, this uh, this entire expression Okay, this one is nothing but p dot, but p dot is 0. So, hence the entire expression is equal to 0 basically. Okay. All right. So, in steady state the differential equation reduces to something like this. Okay. Then you have to note I mean some comment here that uh, uh, p of t by definition is, is something like this and hence what you mean a smaller p of t implies better estimate basically. The, the error covariance matrix is smaller, as the, the estimate is better basically. Okay. And there are also some, some definitions like this, which tells us that uh, if p1, p2 are both positive semi definite, okay, and p2 minus p1 is, I mean, what then p1 is less than equal to p2. Provided p2 minus p1 is is a positive definite matrix. Remember why this is this definition sort of thing because these are we are now talking about matrix algebra basically. So you cannot compare this to whenever you have this p1 and p2 two matrices. The how do you compare them? Okay. And by definition, it turns out that if p1 p1 is less than or equal to p2 if p2 minus p1 is a positive semi definite form matrix basically.
all right now here is a point where you can actually go ahead and and uh, try to derive thermal filter uh, so what it turns out now so far so good actually if you if you see all this our aim was to get something like a p dot and p dot if you see a reverse sequence sort of thing our our actually aim was to get some sort of a error covariance matrix propagation dynamic actually so we we wanted to get a p dot and p dot turns out to be something like this and as, and the same value to hold transpose actually okay so then uh, this value we are interested in so we had to do some some algebra like that but here is a point where you got this r w x tilde and r v x tilde so we wanted that expression actually and that is why we derived this r v x tilde and r w x tilde that way okay so now i hope it will it is still more clear actually so we got this uh, this p not okay and there are some theorems which tells us there is a stable solution if if a not is stable then there always exist a p a positive semi definite p and okay and in general i mean it it will reach a steady state value and once it reaches a steady state value the equation is given something like that actually now what you are interested to obtain a constant uh, observable kalman gain we are not interested in time varying ke and all that we are interested in something like a constant uh, ke basically so if you do that then the idea here is to minimize the steady state error covariance matrix okay. if you look at this one there is a solution which is first to definite and first to semi definite at least and all that okay. all right so this is uh, okay so that is how it is so what is what you are telling here is we are interested in a steady state value which is smaller actually so okay that means we are interested in minimizing the covariance the steady state covariance matrix p basically and what is steady state covariance matrix p the solution that comes out of this this equation actually okay so here is an optimization formulation which starts to tells that okay we have to kind of uh, minimize this uh, this p but remember p is a matrix now but trace turns out to be a kind of a norm basically so we are interested in minimizing the trace of p you now okay okay so what is p by definition limit t tends to infinity this thing actually right this uh, this the trace of p what it means right? limit t tends to infinity this what you want to interest in. so uh, when t goes to infinity these error quantities are there x1 tilde square x2 tilde square like that actually and expected value of all that if you put it in summit of and that's what i want to minimize actually okay. but this has to be minimized subject to this this constant equation because this const this is what the constant equation we got okay. so this uh, this cannot be ignored actually this has to be subject to that so uh, in other words we want to find an uh, some appropriate selection of p and k in such a way that it will minimize the the steady state uh, p or uh, steady trace of p to be very exact okay. subject to this uh, regard equation basically now here is there are some facts from uh, from uh, matrix calculus and this matrix calcul uh, means some facts i well will buy it actually will not go through the detail of uh, this derivations and all and these are all matrices actually remember sigma is a matrix and we are also matrices and some of these results are are, uh, are available basically we will simply try to use it so what it tells us we have got uh, this this is optimization problem here where you have to minimize this uh, cost function subject to this equation which is equal to 0 so the theory tells us that you can uh, you can have an augmented cost function which is the original cost function plus this uh, half of trace of z z times s where s is a lagrange multiplier matrix actually then the necessary condition turns out that okay this these all these derivative the, now these are functions of p k e and s so the partial derivative of j bar with respect to p has to be zero with respect to k e has to be zero and with respect to s has to be zero now this partial derivative can be derived using some of these results here okay so it turns out to be something like this now we have to solve these three equations together basically and that is not that difficult to see 
ok. So, from equation 1 ok, you can actually if you do this ok, then this equation can be written something like this and this is nothing but a kind of a Lyapunov equation actually ok. Ok, so this is Hence, as long as A naught is stable, S is guaranteed to be positive definite. Okay. Okay. Not uh, a system dynamics matrix for for, the, for that particular Lyapunov equation and all that. So as long as A naught is stable, okay, there will be a positive definite matrix S uh, which will satisfy this equation. Okay. Remember what is S? Okay, uh, G is the equation. Okay. S is nothing but the Lagrange multiplier actually. Lagrange like multiplier matrix in to be exact. Now, once you have that, okay, let us go to this equation 2 and what does the equation 2 tells? It tells something like this, okay, that means K E R minus P C transpose is 0 because S is a positive definite matrix, it cannot be 0 actually. So, K E, okay, if you see this equation, it is just K E is nothing but P C transpose R inverse. And interestingly, it is exactly similar to what we have actually derived in LQ observer theory. If you can see that uh, pre lecture notes, uh, will, I mean the slides for that lecture, you will see that actually. So, K is nothing but P C transpose R inverse and that is how it is and uh, we have used equation 1 to whatever equation 3. And so, from 3 you can put some, you can put it that way. You now, you expand A naught is A minus K E C sort of thing. So, that you expand all that is equal to 0 okay. and then it turns out to be something like that A P minus uh, this P C transpose uh, R inverse A P and all that actually is equal to 0. Okay. okay. That means, uh, okay, p, I mean you can see that P A P is here. Okay, then uh, P A transpose is coming from this term. Okay, K E trans K E R K E transpose, and K E is nothing but uh, this one. P C transpose R inverse. So you can substitute that. Whatever K E appears, okay, I will get that. Okay. Then it turns out that uh, two terms will cancel out actually. Because R R inverse is identity. Once this is identity, these two terms are uh, equal and opposite. So they will they, they will go. So, you, lay, you are left out with something like this actually. Okay. So, this turns out to be the filter algebraic, algebraic record equation or in short it is called filter ARE actually. Okay. So, once you solve this you get uh, the record matrix P and finally, K E is nothing but P C transpose R inverse that is how it is. So, summary is uh, something like this you have got uh, System model which is x dot is x plus b u plus g w, and we have got a measured output which is uh, y equal to c x plus b. And we have initial condition, you have got process noise, you have got sensor noise. These are character by characterized by their mean values and covariance matrix. Initial condition mean value is x tilde on p naught and uh, w is 0 q and v is 0 r. Okay. Assumptions here are these two noises or white noise and this W V and also X naught except T naught are actually mutually orthogonal. Okay. Okay. Then you define that uh, error in the state something X of uh, X of T minus X height of T where X height is the estimate of X. And our our interest is to find x height of t such that p, okay, in the limiting sense, that means the steady state p, limit t tends to infinity, expected value of x x tilde x tilde transpose, that is what it is. So steady state p has to be minimized actually. So filter operation, I we initialize it first, something like x height of zero. Then we need to solve this Riccati matrix or filter ARE. That is that the equation that you need to solve. Then you can compute the Kalman gain and then you can propagate the filter dynamics because x at 0 is known and this filter dynamics structure is known with a deterministic value of k e. Okay. So, this there is no nothing unknown now here. Okay. 
So, you can propagate this filter dynamics and because of the nature of the solution and things like that is guaranteed to give uh, stable tracking, I mean stable error dynamics that means error error value that x tilde x minus x set will ultimately go to 0 as t goes to infinity actually. All right. All right. So, so far so good it turns out to be very lucrative actually, but there are certain certain issues uh, uh, for uh, successful operation of Kalman gain and there are certain mathematical comments also basically. So, let us see those one or two actually there. So, first thing is this y minus y hat uh, that is you can think about that is y tilde and y minus y hat is something y minus y hat is something like uh, well I should have that. Yeah, y minus y hat. So, y is uh, actual measurement and y hat is cx hat actually. Okay. okay. So, estimated output, predicted output, whatever we can say actually. Okay. So, if you take actual output minus uh, this predicted output, this is called this is called the residual or uh, innovation actually. Okay which is also a zero mean white noise okay, and that actually uh, leads to this whiteness test actually. Okay. So, in other words if you implement a filter and then tell okay filter is working then you also need to do some sort of uh, a few tests to validate your result that it is actually working okay, and you are not misled actually. So, what the first result tells us that if you think about residual or this one. Okay, so, it also needs to be some sort of a zero mean white noise, okay. right. So, this uh, what you can do now is uh, you generate this uh, uh, this residual for a large number of signals and they try to find out the mean value of that and that should go to 0 actually, ok. So, that is called whiteness test and uh, the, in other words uh, this particular y tilde ok has to behave like a like a white noise actually. Okay, and y tilde is something like this: c x tilde v and c x tilde plus v. Okay, so and then expected value of y y tilde y tilde y tilde transpose should turn out to be r actually. So that's actually a, a kind of a whiteness test basically. Right there. And also remember in the estimation process the state equation actually helps in up, uh, in eliminating the outliers. Okay. That means, you propagate the state equation of filter dynamics and things like that you expect uh, some sort of a value for uh, y hat you know what is y hat actually. Okay. Now, if uh, y turns out to be pretty close to y hat then okay, maybe you are wrong or uh, the sensor is good. So, we can uh, operate that uh, I mean you can update the values and all that for x hat. But if uh, some for some reason some y happens to be much larger than y hat, then something is going wrong there. Okay, you tell okay that data particularly is turns out to be something like an outlier. So we don't have to use it actually. Okay. So then it turns out that the state equation uh, because you have to propagate to see what is cx hat. So the idea here is uh, the state equation actually helps us. In, uh, in eliminating outliers also, that means if there is some outlier somewhere then you do not have to operate it actually. Okay. Whereas, the measurements or other innovations uh, help us in correcting the modeling errors or inaccuracy actually. Okay. That means, uh, it does both the things, it actually helps us in, uh, in uh, declaring some third data as outlier and hence not using it or it actually kind of if you use it because you are relying more on the sensor output and less on the system process or process modeling actually. So, it actually helps us correcting the modeling errors or modeling inaccuracies as well actually. So, what is the third point? Third point is if C A is observable and this pair A comma uh, Z square root of Q is reachable, then the filter ARE has a unique PDF solution. Okay for the Riccardi matrix P. Okay. Moreover, the solution leads to Kalman gain that, de that drives the aerodynamics asymptotically stable. Okay. So, there are two conditions one is it is the problem has to be 
observable. Otherwise, you, there nothing will work. Your Kalman filter is also not going to work actually. So, for the Kalman filter to work, this pair C A has to be observable first, and this pair A comma G times square root of Q needs to be reachable actually. And if this condition is observe, if observability is not there, you can do anything. But on top of observability, this has to be there for unique solution of uh, this filter theory. If it is there, then you can get uh, something like a unique PDF solution or first definite solution of uh, from a, a from algebraic uh, Riccati equation or filter theory equation. Okay. And moreover, this uh, this uh, solution will ultimately lead to Kalman gain. Remember, Ke is nothing but P C transpose R inverse. So ultimately lead to lead to Kalman gain that derives the that drives the error dynamics asymptotically to 0 basically. Okay. Now, the fourth observation okay. the assumption this one a comma g times square root of q is reachable requires that the process noise should uh, should excite all states actually. Okay. Process noise keeps on coming and the, the ultimately should excite uh, all states. Okay. And if it doesn't, then probably something somewhere something goes wrong, and you will not be able, never be able to observe it properly. Actually, okay. So, so because there is a requirement that it should excite all states, so sometimes there is a necessity now to inject artificial process noise to the plant. For example, if you talk about kinematic level and dynamic level variables, typically a system dynamics contains two level of variables, something like kinematics, which is something like x dot is v. And dynamics where we well, where v dot is a. Now v dot is not really a plus a plus w. I can say that way. Okay. Okay. So what about because this is a physical quantity, normal acceleration, right? I mean acceleration applied to the system basically. That is that uh, is directly influenced by noise W. Okay. Now the question is, uh, okay, because it needs to excite all states. Now W suppose it doesn't excite x actually; it keeps on exciting v dot v only through this v dot equation. Then it makes sense to kind of inject uh, artificial noise W1. Remember, x dot is V is simply by definition, there is no noise, nothing in that actually. But still, by putting an artificial noise uh, W1, things uh, the system, the filter uh, can work uh, beautifully actually. Okay, so, this is what it tells. Then the third, the another point is the requirement to compute R inverse demands that R is positive definite, and hence it is necessary that the measurement noise outputs uh, all the measurements. So you have measurements, but R inverse uh, has to happen because we cannot define some set of measurement and tell okay that particular component. I don't know what is going on actually. You can tell that. So what it happens is uh, the requirement to compute R inverse demands that R needs to be positive definite. And hence, it is necessary that the measurement of uh, noise corrupts all measurements. And uh, because of this, there is a, a usually some preference. I mean, there is some performance degradation. And if there are uh, some noise-free measurements, uh, typically either you do it that way. That means you artificially inject the noise and make everything go bad. And uh, so either you leave it that, or there are some some noise-free measurements or uh, some little bit more practical, complicated filters. Uh, uh, should be used. They are typically there in the literature. One thing comes from this dash filter, uh, dash filter, uh, for example, actually. So there are bunch of uh, issues here for successful operation of Kalman filter. We will see more on that when you when we finish the external Kalman filter later, actually. All right. So only then, if you make sure that these things are not forgotten, these are these are kept in mind. Then you can get uh, nice behavior of common filter actually. The another one uh, which uh, another statistical important statistical property that expected value of exterior exterior transposition should be zero. That means the state vector, state and error vector. Okay, this is remember this is estimated state is estimated error. The, so the state vector uh, uh, is orthogonal to the estimate of the state vector actually. Okay. You can see Anderson in more formal details. 
And lastly, this uh, comparison sort of thing. Suppose you have observer design and a filter design. That means you have this x dot is x plus b here, but there is a process noise plus w, and you have got y c x, you have got y f c x plus v here. Okay. Interestingly, the solution to both problem turns out to be same. I mean, this k equal to p c transpose uh, r inverse, okay. and where the p is the solution of the this regard equation actually. Okay. But here, uh, if you talk about the other one, it is the Ricard equation contains g also, g g transpose this side also. It's the only difference there. Okay. Then this part I have already told you before. Kernel filter derivation assumes white noise, and uh, some many real life problems are typically not uh, recreated by white noise. Rather, color noise are very frequent. So, as an example, I told wind gust noise and all that etc. So, in, in that situation, uh, one can form a subsystem whose input is a white noise and output is a color noise and explain all that a uh, little while before. And sub, the, the subsystem is then augmented with the original system to form an augmented system uh, whose input is a white noise actually. So, this is this is what it is. Initially, this uh, okay. I showed an example already before actually. Initially, uh, what happens is, uh, okay. So, you have got a transfer function or you have got some sort of a small time uh, state space model for which uh, you take input as white noise uh, and output as the, the actual color noise that uh, that you are expecting actually. So, then what happens is, you, you uh, tend to kind of augment these two together and then you will get uh, what you really want actually. Okay. So, this example I have just given a little while before actually or maybe in the previous lecture you can see basically. Okay. So, this is very a uh, neat concept because many times it is actually colored noise. But colored noise uh, can be actually a dynamic model or static model. Either way, actually, you can uh, think about putting that as uh, some sort of a, a, a system dynamics associated with that colored noise is something like this. So, you have got x w uh, dot is something like this, or n is a white noise, and where w is a colored noise, and that is a function of uh, x w and white noise both. So, you can put that in the state space form and then carry out all the basically. Okay. Now, if you do that, the common filter theory can now be applied to the entire augmented system basically. Okay. So, the, then it can be addressed and this is typically called swapping filter ideas and all that each other. Way. So, if you see that there are bunch of uh, these comments out here, issues, observation, comments and all, just uh, be aware of that. There, there can be many more comments, many more suggestions in the literature as well actually. And we will slowly go towards the discrete uh, time derivation. And then, how do you put continuous time discrete time together? That means, system dynamics can be continuous, but measurements are discrete. So, how do you do that? Finally, you will extend the same concept in the same discrete time discrete continuous setting uh, for uh, for extended Kalman filter, which is very heavily used and uh, with lot of applications. And then, all there also we will talk, talk some of these uh, these issues and recommendations and things like that actually. Uh, all right, uh, that is all I want to talk here. Thank you. Bye.